let's get into your COVID issues. Um, I feel, I mean, you just spoke about this not all that long ago. You mentioned on your Instagram. Um, this was a huge thing for you. This was a long-term battle that you had since having COVID. What, what all happened? Yeah, so pretty much I ended up getting it and uh, I got rocked pretty hard by it. Um, the first few days were weren't so bad it was just kind of like the on and off kind of spotty fever kind of thing like the chills and whatnot I think like most people get it and then I'm not sure what happened from there myself the doctors we have a couple of hunches but things kind of spun out of control my fever spiked to 104 I I was overheating um it was so crazy I remember taking an ice cold shower trying to get my body temp down and like the freezing cold water would touch the top of my head. And by the time it got down to my neck, it was like boiling hot. Oh. I was like, that's crazy that just this amount of distance was causing water, freezing water to boil. So I went into the hospital. Uh, they checked me out. They took my temperature. They really didn't have anything for me to do but sit in a cold room by myself to, to bring my fever down. But after that, I just started developing... Um, this this cough and these breathing issues i was coughing so bad that the blood vessels in my eyes burst so like my eyes were bloodshot looked insane uh, of course as a wrestler the first thing i wanted to do was start taking pictures to I document know. it like we do um but yeah, yeah I, I just couldn't breathe i couldn't get a full breath in i'd get like these little half breaths where the air would kind of get to here and it would stop before it gets up to a place you can actually really get it in so um couldn't lay on my back couldn't lay on my side i couldn't wear t-shirts uh because it would suffocate me that extra pressure on my lungs was just awful uh i had to like learn to sleep sitting forward in a chair which i already am like the world's worst sleeper um so these things certainly different didn't help i was like having to take like night quill and all these like melatonin all all these sleep aids combined together just to kind of pass out just for a little bit but oh yeah certain days it got so bad I couldn't speak I just couldn't get enough air in to talk and it was like every breath for weeks months was an active process something that I had to actively do and it was it was scary because I kept seeing the doctors and everyone was like this is this is brand new we don't know what to tell you we, we don't know how to treat this uh, we can clearly see that you're your lungs are bad. I went to the pulmonologist one day and they put me in this little cubicle and I did like this, this breathing exam. And, um, I remember afterwards on the way into the pulmonologist, I saw like this 90 year old woman hobbling out on like a walker and the doctor goes, uh, Hey, did you by chance see that older woman that walked out when you got here? I was like, yeah. And she, he goes, uh, yeah, her lung, her lung strength is triple what yours is right now after this test. And I was like, oh, oh my, my goodness. Gosh. So it was literally over a year of going to the docs every couple of weeks, every month, them testing me, me failing miserably and just going back home. Like, I guess hopefully time will heal this and we'll, we'll go from there. Um, don't get me wrong. The kind of crazy part too was, some days I felt more or less fine. The only time I would notice is if I worked out and I really tried to push it, then I could feel like I, I just can't get the air in like I used to. But yeah. that kind of was the frustrating part was I, I tried everything. You know, what was causing me to have good days and bad days? Was it working out too hard? Was it like some sort of congestion or allergies? And mm -hmm. we just, we still to this day have no idea. Like just sometimes it's good and sometimes it's bad and no one can tell why. Mentally, what was that like for you? Because I know, I mean, I had it obviously not to the degree that you had it, but I had it and I had all the symptoms and, you know, all that stuff. But I had it so early on that I remember like the mental warfare that went down where I was like, I don't know what's happening. Nobody else really seems to know what's happening. I never went to a doctor with mine. I was just like at home kind of self quarantining on like the upper level. John was downstairs. Um, and just trying to make the most of it I and mean, using any kind of anti-inflammatory stuff that I could find. Uh, I found some stuff on like Amazon, these like other like breathing pills. I'm like, give me all of the stuff. But yeah. when you don't know what you need and nobody has the answers and it's all so new, but I mean, for you to have it with the severity that you did, 
what did that do to you mentally? Probably the scariest part for a little bit of this was um, when the breathing was bad, it was scary to go to sleep because I was worried that I might not wake up. You know, I might suffocate myself in my sleep, um, especially with how tired I was getting at points because I literally wasn't sleeping. Yeah. Um, you know, I was worried I was just going to pass out and that that might be it, you know. So there there was that fear for a little bit. Um, now thinking kind of professionally and about where my life was headed. It's like, all right, well, I've been with WWE for 10 years. We're doing mass firings left and right. Um, and you know, there seems to be not necessarily a rhyme or reason for it. Yeah. I got to get my ass back to work or else I'm going to be in the next group. You know, like I got to yeah. go back and prove my worth and show them why I should still have a contract. And I just was not in a position to, to do that. And then part of me too was like, I don't want to go back until I'm ready because if I go out there and my, my lungs give out in a match and I'm, I'm dragging it. And my whole thing is I stay hyped and I'm the hype man. I got all the energy. Now I'm the guy that gets blown, blown up, up by the time that. you got to the ring. Oh my God. Exactly. So I was like, I, I don't know what's better to, to try and go back with them knowing that I'm recovering just to do something or to wait until I'm a hundred and then get back to business as usual. I remember kind of pitching, Hey, what if I was someone's hype man, a manager role, a bodyguard, you know, commentary, announcing, anything, shoot, send me to the corporate office and let me use my business degrees and let yeah. me essentially do what I'm doing now for you guys. But, uh, you know, and I, I agree with them on this. It was, we decided it was better to just stay home until I was ready. What was the point of, of rushing it and, you know, maybe making me worse or taking step back to, uh, yeah. you know, try and take one step forward. It just wasn't worth it. So there was just kind of all these things going through my head. And it was just like, man, I'm, I don't know what to do. I mean, it's like, I'm, I'm lost. I, I have no idea how to handle this. Did you go back at all before you guys parted ways, you and WWE parted ways? No. So my last match with Chad Gable uh, was my last time at work. Aside, I think, from maybe later that week going in for testing or, or something to that extent, that, that was it right then and there.